10 years ago, at 25 years old, I was diagnosed with depression and general anxiety disorder. I felt devastated. Every single chore seemed enormous. Simple tasks like getting out of bed proved too difficult. I thought my life has come to an end, or so it seemed. It was actually the beginning of a journey, a journey that will lead me to the mental health I was craving for. However, in 2012, everything changed completely. I discovered the world of positive words. Fast forward five years later. I am in a class with more than 30 kids from eight to nine years old. I am the teacher and I teach them positive words. In that hour, I teach them about gratitude. And I ask them, what is it? In my language, the word gratitude can be confused with confession. So they say to me, to confess when you lie. And they look disappointed that for the next hour, they will have to learn to tell the truth. Others say to be good with another person. Now, I teach in different state schools, different classes for kids of different ages. And there was not a single kid which knew what gratitude was. I tell them, gratitude is taking time to remember moments from your life when you are happy about something, and when you saw someone being happy about something unrelated with yourself. At the end of the class, I would have more kids writing on the board what they draw in their drawings, and in some classes, other kids line up in a queue, eagerly waiting to do the same. The root of my depression was that I couldn't remember with clarity moments from my life, especially from my childhood, when I was actually happy. Or when I saw someone being happy about something, especially members from my family. I would often negatively generalize. I thought people actually fake being happy. I thought I had such a sad childhood. Looking now at the kids I teach, they choose moments like, I am happy when I run and don't fall down. I am sure I was also happy when I was running in my childhood and didn't fall down. The thing is, I don't remember. You may ask, how do we train our brain to remember positive moments? Well, we do this by taking time to label those moments with positive words. Scientists call this meta-labeling. It is the ability of the brain to pack certain memories, information events in a box, label them so that further one can put work in duplicating the label until it gets prioritized by the brain, the box unfolds and one feels that emotion. My journey towards making and keeping myself mentally healthy was embarked in 2012, when I started researching positive words. 
I began with the word gratitude and then with the word appreciation. And in January 2013, I created the blog, Positive Words Research. On this blog, I started creating a list of positive words. I was adding one by one the words in this list because first I, first I wanted to memorize them. Day by day, the list got bigger. Then something magical happened. People all around the world started commenting on the list, giving me more positive words to add as they were sharing the list with their friends. So the list went viral and became the best list of positive words in the world. When one puts positive words on Google, this list pops first. It has 1,200 positive words. I made another one with 5,000 positive words, then did it in 15 more languages. In my country, Romania, I made the first and the only list of positive words. Up to now, as I speak, my blog has more than 16 million views. I call myself a positive words researcher, but the kids call me the teacher of words. Every day, I receive acknowledgement from people from my own country and all around the world for the work that I do, and this truly humbles me. I am driven by two goals. The study of positive words is included in schools all around the world and studied by kids before going to the university. And the list of positive words is accessed by every person in the world at least once a year in different formats and languages. Sometimes, I give the kids I teach cards with positive words, and I ask them to draw a moment in their life when they felt that word. One boy picked the word luck. I asked him, do you know what luck is? Yes, he replied to me with confidence. Okay then, I leave you, and I will come back to see what you draw. I come back, and I ask him, so what did you do for the word luck? Well, this is the sea. This is my friend, me, and I hold, hold something in my hand. Yes, I can see that, something blue. What is it? Well, it's luck, as he tells me. Because yes, it is a jellyfish, but it's dead. So, this kid gave his own definition of, of what luck is. Luck is picking up a jellyfish with your bare hands and realizing it doesn't hurt you because it's dead. <laughs> As adults, I noticed that when I ask them what a positive word or emotion is, they tend to give me a definition from the dictionary. One girl made a drawing for the word power. She drew her room herself and a monster. She told me that when she was little, she used to see monsters. But after undergoing psychotherapy, she didn't anymore. Because as she told me, she had the power to not see the monsters anymore and overcome this. One boy, had ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I met him while teaching a wo kids workshop in Mind Valley U, voluntary work. I stayed for one month in Barcelona, attending the workshops of this academy, Mind Valley U, day by day. Before the workshop, his mother came to me and told me, 
my boy will disturb your class a lot. He has ADHD. I said, okay. So during the workshop, this happened. Teacher, teacher, do you know this word? Yes, it is positive, yes. Teacher, teacher, how about this word? Wow, yes, super. Teacher, teacher, how about this word? So the entire hour, the entire workshop, he came to me and he was nagging me. At one point I asked him, how come you know all these positive words? He told me, of course I know them, I am a poet. So after the, the workshop, this boy started writing about life in general and became more enthusiastic about his life, as his mother told me and thanked me a lot. For kids younger than seven years old, I need to explain the concept of a positive word and emotion. They don't know. Positive words are passed on from one human to another through education. There is no doubt about it. If this is not done properly, kids grow up as adults with scarcity in their positive thinking area. Psychologists say that if one is not able to name an emotion, it further develops in low self-esteem, low resilience, and a lot of lacks in their communication because they are unable to communicate in a deep and meaningful way. For kids between seven and 10 years old, I need to explain more complex positive words. They've heard the simple ones like happiness, love, courage, hope, but they don't know about altruism, loving kindness, compassion, or other like self-love, for example. For kids older than 10 years old, I need to do the same with the only difference that they have heard about complex words like compassion or loving kindness or um, altruism, but they cannot uh, connect the word with the moment in their life when they felt that word. For example, for um, loving kindness among other exercises that I do, I do one when I ask them to draw something when they were kind with themselves. And they usually say to me, oh, I was never kind with myself. And I say, what do you mean? Wasn't the moment in your life when you lost something and you didn't stay there to cry about it, you went and you found it. Now one boy surprised everyone. He said in loud voice, yes, there was a moment like that. One day I lost my kendama toy. Now I don't know how many of you know, but kendama toy this day, it's a toy that kids loves a lot. So the entire class got silence. And I was, oh my God, I hope this has a happy ending because it's a positive word class. And so <laughs> I asked him, so what happened? Well, I searched it for one hour and I found it, it was in a bag. A bag. I said, super, you draw there how you lost your kendama uh, and you found it and I said, Kids, this is a perfect example of being kind with yourself, losing your kendama toy and finding it for you again. So these are some drawings of what they did. From my research, I discovered that not negative words or emotions bring us so much pain, but the lack of positive words and the emotions. Have you seen the boiled rice experiment from YouTube? One man boiled rice and put it in two jars. On one jar, he put the word love and on another one, the, love, uh, the word hate. Day by day, he posted on YouTube videos of what was happening with the rice. So in a few days, the rice in the jar with the word love stayed mainly the same, beautifully white. While the rice in the jar with the word hate 
started having mold in it. You'd be surprised to know that penicillin is derived from mold. Penicillin that saves and it's still saving the lives of millions of people all around the world. Negative words and emotions have their perfect place in this world. It is not about deleting them or controlling them more. It's about adding something. Adding positive words and emotions into our lives. Why? So that we can have a realistic power of choice. So that we can be free to experience whatever emotion we want. And not being crippled by depression because we don't have a simple skill like practicing gratitude. Now, I invite you all to particip participate in a simple exercise with me, and hopefully a fun one. And after this exercise, I will give you something. So turn to the person on your left and ask him for his first name and tell him a positive word that begins with the first letter of his name. You have five seconds. For Alex, for example, you can say abundance appreciation. And I want some volunteers to tell me um, some names and some positive words. So let's see, we have someone. Let's see, in the first row here, who wants to tell me a positive word? Yes. Yes? What? Successful, super. Another positive word? Bless, yes. Altruism, super. Okay, three more. Three more positive words. Nice, nice super. Vacation. Vacation, that's a positive word for sure. <laughs> Which, yes? Aliens, super. Super, super. So now, as promised, I will give you something something that I normally give to the kids I teach. I will give you a homework. <laughs> so after this TEDx event, go home and research these five positive words on the internet. I will tell you in very few words what they mean. Ikigai, it's a reason for being. Loving kindness. If one wants to understand the true essence of love, please practice first kindness and then loving kindness. Warm-heartedness. Dalai Lama says that the ultimate source of happiness is not money or power, but warm-heartedness. The concept of Ubuntu, which is a combination between compassion and humanity. And omniscience which is an important stage of evolution in human uh, life. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you.